One of the things we found over the years is that there are changes in astronauts' eyes. Initially, in the early programs, all the way through the first part of International Space Station, we thought those changes in people's vision, how they see things, uh, was just temporary and minor. About halfway through our International Space Station experience, we noticed that some of the astronauts' vision changes were a little bit more severe in that they had a harder time seeing objects both near and far, and also the vision didn't go back to normal as quickly as we expected it to. So we started looking a lot more closely at the back of the eye. What we noticed was that tissue in the back of the eye became a little bit more swollen and the shape of the eye changed. But the big question is why? Why would someone's eye change shape? Why would the back of the eye become swollen? One of the major changes that we've been able to document and understand is how the blood volume shifts from your lower body to your upper body when you go into microgravity. So things happen like your nose gets stuffy, your eyes feel a little bit of pressure, it feels like you have a really bad head cold. Well, we think that that change in fluid volume and that shift might be behind those changes in the eye. We also think it could be affecting the brain and changing what's called intracranial pressure. Normally, we measure intracranial pressure through a procedure called lumbar puncture. In spaceflight, that'd be very complicated to do, and we wouldn't want to necessarily do that to our astronauts if we didn't have to. So we look at non-invasive ways of measuring pressure in your brain through your eyes or your ears or how much blood flow is actually going to your brain using ultrasound. So NASA has a lot of work ahead to understand the use of these non-invasive devices, both terrestrially and in flight. Part of our job is to understand how we use these tools um, before, during, and after a space mission to compare the results. In the process, we determine kind of how valid these procedures are, um, how mature the technologies are, and how well we can apply them not only to spaceflight, but what would be appropriate for spin back to Earth.